Hello everybody. Uh, during the Greek War of Independence, piracy in the Aegean emerged as the most burning international issue for belligerents and neutrals alike. And if banditry on land, harming only local population, did not provoke any serious international reaction up to 1870, when the famous slaughter of European travelers and diplomats at Dilesi occurred, on the other hand, uh, piracy, which had disrupted trade and shipping, caused since the very beginning the intervention of the navies of the major European powers. The French created La Station de Levant, a permanent patrolling fleet in the Aegean which tried to protect the French interests as well as the Catholic population. The British sought to enhance their commercial interests as well through the protection of, the, of their Ionian subjects whereas at the same time promoted their geopolitical interests in the area, being the first power to recognize Greeks as a belligerent nation in 1823 and helping them to suppress piracy after 1827. The Austrians, on the other hand, who controlled much of the commercial traffic in the Aegean and regularly supplied the Ottoman troops, suffered many losses from Greeks, corsairs, and pirates. Thus, in 1825, they sent a small squadron under the command of Admiral Paolucci to check Greek hostilities and obtain adequate compensation for the captured Austrian merchant ships. Uh, the spreading of piracy in the Aegean had its origins to the economic distress of the seafaring population and the long period of unemployment due to the crisis in shipping business already since 1815. The shipping crisis that followed the end of the Napoleonic Wars decreased seriously the profits and raised unemployment rates on long seamen to such extent that they became almost a constant source of social disorder in the last years up to 1821. It was this factor too that according to some historians precipitated the participation of Haydn and Spetses in the Greek War of Independence. After the declaration of the blockus to Ottoman towns and fortresses by the Greeks in 1822, those who practiced privateering often did not distinguish corsairing from piracy and therefore attacked not only neutral European merchantmen, but also Greek ones. Local authorities tolerated this as they often had vested interests on piracy and praise. Also had serious difficulties to control rioting and troublesome crews interested only to prizes. In fact, Greek seamen were used to the established system of payment in form of shares in the merchant ships in the days of profitable trade before 1815. During the war, they were generally badly paid, if paid at all, and therefore constantly pressured to share the price and strongly objected to any effort to protect neutral ships taken for inspection. This phenomenon also helped European powers with the exception of England since 1823, as already mentioned, to consider Greeks not as corsairs of a belligerent nation, but as mere pirates. Between 1821 and 1826, the damages of neutral merchant shipping, according to estimations of the French Admiral de Ligny, were 4 million francs for Austria, 900,000 for England, and 300,000 for France, the later being lower thanks to the presence of the Station de Levant. Pirates extending their activities up to Malta and Benghazi, where they also settled a Greek piratical basis. Also notorious were some plundering expeditions of, of, of certain chiefs of armed bands as Kresiotis and Mavrovuniotis in the Syro Palestinian coast in 1826. Piracy reached its climax in the summer of 1827 and continued even after the Battle of Navarino, when officially no enemy was to be found due to the lack of means of subsistence for the seafaring population. The British at first and the French with the collaboration of the provisional government of Greece tried to suppress piracy, but their efforts were unsuccessful up to 1828. Then government Capodistrias coordinated with Admiral Neulis, who in command of the national fleet destroyed the bases and strongholds of the pirates. The major strongholds were Granvusa in Crete, Mani in southwestern Peloponnese and northern Sporades, also called Demon Islands. In this scheme, Syrios occupied a special position as the most important market of the fruits of piratical activities, including, including ship prizes, merchandises, war captives, and so on. 
Before analyzing Cirrus as a hub of transactions for pirates, it is useful to delineate its complicated political and institutional status quo during the turbulent years of the Greek War of Independence. The pre-existing Catholic population of the island were Ottoman subjects, loyal to the Sultan, to whom they also paid the taxes regularly during the armed conflict. The Orthodox war refugees who arrived after 1822, mainly from Chios, Psara, and the shores of Asia Minor, were badly accepted by the locals. Also, the provisional government of Greece tried to claim its authority on them, and they occupied soil on the port area through new instituted authorities, such as a prefect assisted by a band of armed men, as well as port authorities invested with rights to levy port dues. The provisional government also demanded taxes from the refugees for the expenses of the war. During these developments, the port could not offer any protection to its Catholic subjects and did not intervene to harm the Orthodox refugee settlement either, thus ensured the, the neutrality of Syrians in the hostilities. Suffering from the bands of the armed Orthodox, the Catholic population then sought relief from the natural protectors, the Habsburg and French fleets operating in the Aegean waters. They intervened to protect the population of common religious faith, but far from being under the former jurisdiction. This complicated status quo between nominal and effective power exercised over two different types of population with opposing interests in an unstable conjuncture, a fluid institutional context transformed the previous almost vacant harbor area of Syros to a market which favored all kinds of economic transactions and created numerous opportunities for rapid and large profits. The economic activities undertaken by the Orthodox population on the harbor of Syros were not always to the interests of the belligerent nation they belonged, but often merely focused to amass a fortune. The sales and purchases of the captured merchandises and the ships themselves were perhaps among the most frequent transactions in Syria at that time. The merchants of Syria had their own agents in the piratical bases, like in Granvuza or in northern Sporades, and through them bought the stolen goods in lower prices, which they sold afterwards in Syria or in Smyrna. This sort of illegal trade came to such an extent as to harm the commercial interests of the merchants of Smyrna, who complained to Captain Hamilton, head of the British fleet in Aegean. He arrested two Syrios merchants, Androsios Karamagas from Chios and Costadinos Lutraris, but they managed to avoid trial during the transfer to Smyrna and returned back home. Also in 1827, some arrested pirates testified that Androsios Karamagas was the real ship owner of piratical vessels that had captured many Ionian merchant ships. However, certain transactions provoke even greater disdain to other Greeks as the haste and eagerness of the seamen of the Hydra and Spetses fleet to collect and sell in, in the market of Syrus the belongings, cannons, and even the bells of the churches of the destroyed Psara, which, which were left behind by the Ottoman fleet in the summer of 1824. Furthermore, the merchants of Syrus did not hesitate as well to sell supplies and foodstuff to both belligerents, Greeks and Turks, to the disgrace and anger of the provisional government of Greece. Merchants like Ambrosius Karamagas, Antonios Nikas from Hydra, and Evstratios Sugduris from Epirus faced serious accusations for selling food supplies to the besieged Turks in fortresses and towns. Along with commodities and ships, slave trade was also carried out in, considerable, in a considerable degree, the human prices being mainly Muslim captives of war. Sometimes these were used as a means of exchange but for Greeks enslaved by the Turks. But generally, human price was offered as a mere commodity to such extent that some of these transactions were made before a notary. Even a representative of the provisional government of Greece uh, in Syros, like Costadinos Orlandos, son of the notable and ship owner of Spetses, Ioannis Orlandos, stipulated in April 1827 a notarial act of purchase of six Turkish captives taken by a Greek privateer in the strait between Chios and Cesme. The captain of the Greek Navy, Lazarus Pinotis from Hydra, had to give up in the pressures of his crew, who decided to interrupt their duty and set sail to Syros in order to sell a group of distinguished Turkish captains from a corvette they had burned in May 1825. A number of young Turks in 1822 
cost 320 euros to Giorgio Stefano, a representative of the Catholic community in Syros, whereas in 1827 a beautiful Ottoman girl was offered to the American doctor of the Greek forces, Samuel Howe, for 100, for 100 Spanish silver dollars. Money countrified was also a grown business in Syros in that period. Specialized craftsmen, equipment and machinery were established there, backed by wealthy merchants, the same people who controlled and carried out the dishonored activities of booty sales with pirates and smuggling of supplies to the Turks. Money counterfeit was also widespread to the areas of the rebel Greece like Hydra and Spetses, as well as in Gastuni in Peloponnese, the later enterprise being owned by the local wealthy notable Giorgio Sicinis. Cyrus also provided the technical basis for the pirates as well as for every other ship, thanks to the flow of many shipwrights, carpenters, caulkers and other shipyard craftsmen, mainly from Chios. The Corses and Pirates brothers, Iorios and Constantinos Zurbas from Thessaly, built their other vessel, Kendavros and the Edamia, in the summer of 1827, before obtaining a letter of marque to operate in Maliakos Gulf. Also, Captain Mikaros from Sarai, a notorious pirate, who after the suggestion of another captain from Sarai, Ioannis Apostolis, built his piratical schooner in Syros in that same year. Even if not an economic activity, espionage found a fertile soil to flourish in such an environment as Cyrus uh, was in wartime, with the flow of people from every part of the Levant and beyond, who were engaged in every sort of transaction. Greek and foreign agents of the Mehmet Ali of Egypt settled there, creating a valuable network of intelligence between merchants like Argirios Tarpochtis from Ceres, one of the wealthy merchants of the place, and future mayor of Hermopolis, who maintained his business network with Alexandria, also after independence. He and others, like Padiaz Zinias, were arrested by the provisional government of Greece with charges of espionage. They had a trial, but they were acquitted thanks to, inter to the intervention of Ioannis Coletis, as well as the money of the wealthy merchants of Alexandria, the, the Tositsa brothers, who financed the naval fleet of the Egyptian ruler, together with the Zizinia brothers. According to rumors, Dimitrios Droidis, the father of the writer Emmanuel Droidis, who was engaged in trading activities between Syria and Alexandria, was also working for the espionage network of Mehmet Ali. Mehmet Ali, through his agents in Syria, was also buying ships in prices that the Greek government could not afford to pay in order to prevent the supply of fire ships to the Greek fleet. This fact alarmed the provisional government, which tried to forbid this type of sales to others than the government in the port of Syros. Piracy in the Aegean during the War of Independence was its last great episode in the age of sail in the Mediterranean, although it continued in a very limited scale in the 19th century, as the rarity of such news from sources and the unarmed or unescorted voyages of the merchant vessels reveal. The, this episode of the piracy in the Levant was due to the anomaly of war circumstances that led to a very fluid institutional, political, and socio-economic economic context. Equally important and connected to the above was the factor of unemployment of the seafaring population of the Aegean, previously largely engaged in trading activities in the Mediterranean and Black Sea. Syrus was affected by the anomalous circumstances caused by the sudden ar arrival of war refugees, which took advantage of the neutrality of its port and transformed it to a sort of a black market in th this fluid and transitional context. However, one should not accept that the capital accumulation through piracy was a sine qua non step to further economic development. The merchants of Syros who created Hermopolis from here, Smyrna and Seferis from Sarah and Hydra had previously been engaged for a long time in trade and shipping. If things uh, had been different, they would have continued the same way as before. Only the war and the economic crisis turned them into pirates, which cannot be consider considered the only possible way of capital accumulation for those engaged in shipping and trade. Thank you. Thank you.